thank you everybody coming for my presentation about the frequent market in China, the opportunity and challenge. So the overview of today's talk will cover the Far East fragrance market, then the current artisan perfume market in China, the different market channel, the challenge, the opportunity, the product China product registration process, and finally the Q&A. So what is the challenge to sell fragrance in Far East? What is the challenge? I will try to you know, make the presentation more interact. The choice of the fragrance is different. Any restrictions? Ingredient restriction? Yeah, ingredient restriction. Any other? Hmm? Test on animal. Okay. I think probably the <coughs> direction slightly different. This is all about you know, the regulation. There's a fundamentally challenge for selling fragrance in Asia is using fragrance is not in our tradition. So the social responsibility, if you talk to a lot of you know, Far East people, especially Japanese, we respect other people's space. So, um, they tend not to use overpowering fragrance, affect others. And also, you know, people are more inward, they are not going to express the, themselves. That is the challenge of selling fragrance in the in Asia market, the uh, Far East market. That's why in the past 20 years, the growth of fragrance is quite minimum. But the society has changed. The climate has changed. Everything changed. Fragrance market become booming in Far East since after the millennium. So basically, start from 2010 onward, you can see year-on-year -year growth in fragrance. In average, you know, at minimum around 15% growth. And last year, particularly doing very well in China, have over 30% growth. Okay, what is the opportunity to sell fragrance to Far East customer? So basically, the new generation consumer. Millennium people try to express themselves, so they are more intent to use fragrance compared to the old generation. That's why the population of people using fragrance has been increased. Social media, more coverage, no, easy to get information, not like in the past 20 years, limited to magazine or newspaper, not many article or information about fragrance. But now, because of social media, easy to obtain information, then have a lot of big platform always talking about fragrance. Got, uh, social media in particular form, like WeChat, Weibo in China, and also Facebook. Although China, uh, Facebook has been banned, but no, in Korea and Japan, Facebook have a big impact. Then the, also the targeted product development. If you look at the, a lot of main big brands, they start to create fragrance more suitable for Asia market. Our taste, Asia market, especially Far East market, is very different to any other part of the world. In general, we like light scents. The reason why also 
present before because of the social responsibility. So it's a quick overview of the Far East Fragrant Market. So where has the biggest market? Korea, Japan and China. Which country have the biggest market? Anyone can guess? Korea. Korea? Objection? Any objection? Japan? Any guess? Okay, now we come for a world. Only three can. Who guess is China? Raise the hand. Korea? Japan? Either China or Korea also true. I will tell you why. By total value, China. In 2016, it's around 195 million euro. 195 euro, you know, compared to the whole European market, only less than 2%. European market size is 55 times the China. Then followed by Japan, 95.5 million, and Korea, South Korea, 86 million. Then if by per capita, Korea is the winner. Spending around 1.68 euro per cap. China is only 0 0.14. You can see the gap. And why? A lot of brands really interested in China market because of the population size and the potential. So this is a China market data. This is from beauty, beauty research. Oh, sorry. You just a quick screen through. Basically, the top five brands already capture 95% of the market for the no foreign brand. This data didn't cover the local brand. So Chanel, Dior, Joe Malone, Lancome, YSL. Then the Japan, more or less the same, but no... Uh, after Joe Malone is Galan, YSL. Then South Korea, Joe Malone overtaken Dior. So the current artisan perfumery, perfume market in China, if you have attend yesterday morning talk, uh, they already cover some bills. I need to change my pre presentation accordingly. For so I remove some part which already cover yesterday morning by another speaker. So basically, this all all the big Joe Malone, Deep Take, Atelier Cologne, Roger F Fresh. You know, these are all already in China market officially, and all of them are backed by large firm. Then, how about other brands? You know, especially in today's exhibition, we have many brands. How about other brands? Then the consumer can find other way to purchase artisan perfume in China. So traditional channel in China department store. Then mono brand boutique. Deep take Joe Malone. Gerland all opened their own standalone boutique in China. 
Galan opened their first or second no stand alone boutique outside France. They picked Shanghai. And then in China, have a, a few you know, multi brand boutique. 1010, now they renamed to Spay NK. Sand Library, a local firm set up have their own brand, but also sell a, selection, a small selection of artisan fragrance. And then you can find here and there some of the independent concept store, but their main business is not fragrance. Often it's fashion. So fragrance kind of tag along. Then some of the non-traditional channel, the first one we so-called personal shopping service is very popular in China. They're often through social media or Taobao. And you can place order. And then the, some of the personal shopper based in Europe, then they will go to buy from the store and ship it back. Then a lot of mobile apps, little red, red book, sand page, they all develop some mobile apps. You can purchase fragrance through the mobile apps. Then another thing is social media, Weibo, you no know, WeChat. They have a lot of social group to help people to purchase fragrance. And then the last one is a perfume salon. Some people will organize some events or exhibition, or a small group, uh, sal no, like a, a salon, talking about fragrance. Through this kind of channel, people have a chance to get the information and smell and uh, feeling the, new, the artisan fragrance. This is a... Uh, so this is quite a unique way to sell fragrance in China. So what is the challenge for the small, independent, exclusive brand to enter China market? There's a lot of challenge and not easy to tackle because the first one, you know, the big players dominate the market. They have deep pocket. They can do a lot of advertisement and social media influence is very, have a big impact in China. So they will pay celebrity, not only celebrity, to endorse the brand. They will pay, we so-called key opinion leader to write about their fragrance, become more visible. So it's purely is dominant by the large group. How to tackle it? Really, you know, you need to base on the merit of your product. If you have a very good product, very good sense, then you will still stand a chance. And also the marketplace is very messy for artisan fragrance in China. First, we all well know many fake product around. You name it, not only the big brand, even the smaller brand also have fake products. Then a huge difference in retail price. Because there's a lot of so-called personal shopper, and also people get um, product from the grey market, mess up the market. So the price is variation is huge. Then this is a damage to all the artisan fragrance. Just like, you know, if you compare artisan fragrance and the mainstream fragrance, we always say, you know, you just go to Tesco or you know, a normal supermarket versus a high-end grocery shop. So when did you see a mess or Louis Vuitton go on sale. Never. The 
third one, no, discount always given by official you know, importer. So some screenshot of where from the social media or the online uh, shopping channel, the price. You see, Latisong, 100 ml Latisong, the price is only 70 euro. And official European price 130 now, if I remember correct. Free print also, you know, is all below. Gosh. All below 100 euro. And some people will offer discount. constantly have discount, it will really damage not only the brand, also damage the, we so-called the ecosystem. You see? Even deep tech, they also need to compete with online. Frederick Mao, Nishan, even very, very niche brand. The price is at least you no know, thirty percent below official retail price. Why this happen? Why? You know, as a brand owner, you need to be very careful who you work with. You need to control your distribution channel. This must get from somewhere. So, especially a uh, friend told me, uh, he went into a Dubai perfume shop, asked for a particular brand, and asked for the price. Straight away offered him 30% discount. So, sometimes it's a, you, know, you need to balance the volume and the price control, if you would, like this, you know, if often giving discount, why not you just set your retail price as lower? Then the third challenge, education. In general, in Asia, the beauty consultant was not very well trained. First, no, a lot of brands didn't really invest in it. But the uh, situation has been changed. Some you know, big brands start to invest in training their B BA. And only training, sometimes you, even the brand willing to invest, the result might not be good. This is due to, again, it's very practical reason as a business a beauty consultant m most of their commission actually is come from skincare and color, color cosmetic so they will not really pay attention on fragrance unless you recruit some staff very interested in fragrance then they will pay attention I have some chance to speak to some of the BA, they are very interested in fragrance, then they are very knowledgeable, can talk for an hour, just like the service you can get in Europe. But in general, the BA not interested in fragrance. They can't even really serve the fragrance well. One, uh, when you went into a Chanel boutique, Talk, uh, want to try some fragrance. The customer already say, I don't like lavender. You guess which fragrance the BA give, given to the customer to try? Hmm? Chanel exclusive collection got one fragrance uh, based in Lavender. 
yes, jersey. No, the customer already say, I don't like lavender. You should avoid handing out jersey. A lot of this kind of, um, we so-called you know, funny story happening in Asia or Far East. So most of the customer you know, re rely on key opinion leader or social media to get information. This is not very healthy. Because you know, the, the most accurate information should come from a brand. And then the trade barrier for China, high import tax, and the next one is the product registration co will cost a lot, around you no know, 1,500 euro per reference, and it will take time as well. Then also the limited distribution channels. So in China, there isn't a lot independent perfumery. Almost zero independent perfumery. Not like in Europe or especially in Italy. Every street, you can find one independent perfumery. And the, often the owner pick the brand they like to sell. But in China, there isn't any. So for Really, uh, offline mo model, you really rely on department store or you set up your own boutique, which, you know, monobrand is almost not possible for artisan perfume. The only hope so is a multi-brand. So also, the, another challenge is the fast development of local brand. So many local, you know, local brands entered the market in the past three years. So this is some of the, the local brands. IE Classify opened their own uh, standalone boutique in some large city. Utoria Utoria at the moment selling online. So, after the challenge, I will cover some uh, the opportunity. So the fragrant market is growing in Fais, versus no shrink or no saturated in Europe. So in 2017, China had enjoyed a 35% increase. It's a huge increase. Even Japan has 13%. South Korea got 8.5%. No till now, uh, still less than 1% of Chinese using fragrance. So you... Think about the market side. If double, 195 will double. It's triple, 195 is triple. And if in new generation tend to use fragrance, and the old generation will pass, that means in Far East, the market is keep growing. And also, not only if the market growing, but people still attached to traditional mainstream brand, there isn't any space for us. But new generation often looking for something different, not the same. That's why Joe Malone have a huge growth in the past four years. This is a ch China market data. In 2014, below five, around 
two million euro to now is almost 25 million. Only four year times. And also more artisan perfume in the market and also enter Far East market more choice actually is a good to the industry so synergize the market size so it's not only competition between the brand also helping to grow the pie as in europe already show it artisan perfumery sells grow more and the mainstream brands start to shrink. That's also one of the reasons why all the big brands create their own so-called exclusive line. One to capture the market as well. And one brand, Dior, they revamped their exclusive line to Maison Christian Dior. They only keep eight of their original fragrance and create more than 10 new fragrance. And if you go to smell the scent, it's more or less they are catered for Asia market towards light floral direction. Okay, the final part we will cover will be the process of product registration. As we shared before, the cost will around 1,500 euro per reference and it will take around over six months and in two phases you need to pass phase one then you can go into phase two so phase one need the, you need a company declaration and then a trademark registration so make sure the trademark you own the trademark in China. So I just heard a very sad story from one of the brands. Actually, that brand's name was registered by a Korea company in China. Then you will not be able to do product registration in China. So first, you need to fight to get back your, product registra uh, your trademark registration. And then standard formula, ingredient list. And here I want to make a, make a how do you say, um, yesterday morning, um, the speaker say uh, you need to provide the detailed formula of your fragrance to the authority. That isn't true. You only need to, we so-called, provide the standard formula. I will show you an example template later. And the manufacturer process and the technique, how, you, how, how to make it. Because this, this process basically is uh, original uh, for color cosmetic and skin care. So fragrance also adopt so fragrance uh, that technique and process is quite simple you how you mix the oil then when you add the water when you add the alcohol maturation for how long and bot bottling then the product package design you need to have provide the detailed artwork of your product design and then uh, authorization letter this need to be done notarized in locally and commercial contract you no know, if the process is why you a uh, chinese distributor so make sure the authority need to make sure the china company had the right to import the goods and then one unit per skill per reference first they will check through this your product, the ingredient list with the ingredient list and standard formula you provide. And also the, your packaging design. If all this pass through, then we will enter so-called phase two. So this, this is a 
template for ingredient list, detailed ingredient list you need to provide to the authority. So basically, you need to state how many percent of alcohol, and then what is the purpose of this? You no, know, this is a solvent, and then perform how many percent? You know, so this is a perform, and then you all this, whatever as detailed as you can provide, and also this list need to match the ingredient list on the package. After you pass through all the phase one, then you go into phase two. Phase two is the most um, difficult phase. You, you need to provide 18 u retail units of the products. This is not a random 18 piece. Need must from the same batch with a minimum of 30 ml or 30 gram each. If let's say no, I only produce no, 15 ml size, then you need to provide 36 units. Then you need to provide a free trade certificate. Then for OEM product, you need to have a entrust manufacturer contract between the brand and the manufacturer. Then quality specification of a special ingredient. So this is determined from the formula during the phase one. And also the GMP ISO certificate. All need to be notorious. And sometime why certain in certain in certain case no the product will not pass through phase one. Basically you will not be able to register in China. There's a, uh, a few reasons. Sometimes the name of your product, you know, uh, some, may, some people may encounter certain product will not be able to register because of an offensive name or certain sensitive words. And the other thing is ingredient. Not all the ingredients are approval by China authority for it affect more on skincare market. No certain ingredient each year China authority only approve around less than ten new ingredients. So if in your formula this this hardly happened to uh fragrance, but if happened to one of the ingredients is not approved in China, then your product will not be able to register. So after completion of the laboratory test, a report will be read by an officer. Now if all the safety requirement was met, then they will issue a certificate with a unique number. And this certificate will only valid for four years. Then what happened after four years? So before your current certificate expired, you can apply for renew. You can only renew when you declare the formula hasn't been changed same as four years ago when you submit for the product registration. If your product formula has changed, you need to start the process all over again. Then, fragrant trends in China. China light, light fresh floral, footy floral, a light footy, so cannot be too sugary. Just a touch of a sweet is okay. Green floral, fresh citrus, light woody, and tea scents. Tea scent is very popular in China. 
and pack size. Small is better. So 50 ml or 15 ml, uh, 30 ml. And for the design, your packaging, your bottle, you know, try to towards minimism, classic and elegant. So let's say your packaging is very bling bling, uh, you hardly attract Chinese customer. Yeah. That's also why you know, Joe Malone doing very well in China. Very simple, classic, and elegant. So some best seller in the market, in China market. So you can see the taste of Chinese customer. So some of the my advice, uh, no. If you want to enter to the China market, no. Choose the right partner is crucial. That's why I repeat it three times. Retail price must set as close as European retail price. Because the society has changed, not like 20, 30 years ago. Travel is not easy. There's no internet. There's no cross-border trading. Now people can Google, know the price. Or in China, they cannot Google. They you know Baidu. So if a local retailer have a markup of 20%, 30%, customer will tr treat the local retailer as a showroom. I go to test, then I buy online. So try to keep the difference within 10%. I think some of the big company not related to fragrance also adopt this model. Louis Vuitton try to standardize the price across the world. Chanel already standardized the price. So you sell by your product merit, not the price difference. And also be patient. It's the market is growing, but need to be patient because as an independent artisan perfume brand, you don't have deep pocket. But if your product is good, slowly you will be able to penetrate into the market. Okay, open for question. Uh, thank you. First of all, thank you for the very interesting hands-on information and the advice. Uh, I do have a couple of questions, but maybe two. So one is China. I've never been to China, but my understanding of China is that it's so heterogeneous. Uh, basically, it, it can be com compared to the EU with Denmark on the one hand in its development, and then maybe, no offense, but like Albania on the other hand. So. When we talk about China and fragrances, and we want to get a feeling for the potential, what version of China are we talking about? What are the uh, what are the cities or that we second t uh, two tier cities that we need to tackle? And secondly, uh, what is the potential? Because if you don't, if you are not Joe Malone, how big is the potential basically? For yeah, China is a big country. The taste in general is still the least I list out. The northern part of China will be light, more towards light woody. Southern part will be more fresh citrus. Um, they will not like very strong fragrance. In I mean general customer. Of course, no. There is have some odd one will like something very different. For the potential, if you are not Joe Malone, this rely on the whole echo to develop. Just like you think about in Europe, 
20, 30 years ago, there's not many inde independent perfumery, well-stocked artisan fragrance. You know, I remember when I first went to UK study, the only independent perfumery stock, you know, so-called artisan fragrance was Le Sonto in Elizabeth Street. But now more and more, and even department stores in European country have session for artisan perfumery. So we hope in China, Japan, Korea, this will develop towards that direction. So if your product is good, you might not have a, the potential as big as Joe Malone, but you still can develop a decent sized business. I understand that Sephora has 150, several hundred doors in China, that they've been aggressively going into that market. And I had an opportunity to go to the Sephora headquarters several years ago. And can you comment about Sephora's presence in, uh, in China and what the opportunities are for indie fragrance brands in Sephora, China? Yeah, Sephora will be a good platform, especially for the young customer. And the price point exactly like, right, you know, 750 RMB is the uh, price point they're looking at. For, I always say for artisan perfumery, um, if you are below 1,000 RMB, it's quite easy to sell. Anything above 1,500 RMB, it will be a challenge. So what would that translate? That I would translate? translate to euro, euro or US okay. dollar. Or euro, euro, you know, and anything below 120 euro right. is um, easy to penetrate into the market. Anything about you no know, 200 euro is very hard, unless your product is really have a wow factor or very different. She, thank you very much. It's very interesting what you're saying. You mentioned three times that you have to choose the right partner, but uh, I'm sure most of the uh, brand owner here in the, uh, in the room listening to you have the same question as me. Where do we find the right partner? And what advice would you give to these brands here struggling to, you know, to, to find the right partner? First, don't rush. Spend the time with the, whoever contacting you. Do a proper evaluation. You know, you need, someone may promise you a very aggressive plan, whether you can achieve or not. And you should remember, when they order the stock, the stock need to go somewhere. That is why all the discount on the market is really scary. Because in the old day, you only can find mainstream product on discount. Now, a lot of artisan perfume also on discount. So, patient, understand your partner, and build up trust. Do, would you advise any exhibition to visit for brand owners? Where do they start? Meeting face to face is very important. And the, the longer time you spend with them, you will find out more information about them. No, so someone can know when meet up with you or say, say oh, you know, one week I saw a particular one for 1,000 bottles then you need to rethink, really possible. And, and to a small artisan perfume brand, sometimes they don't even, even produce 1,000 bottles in their warehouse. And you also need to think if really can sell a lot, let's say in a one month, a couple thousand, then you will, may have a production issue as well.
Any other question? Thank you very much.